In this video we talk about differential equations. Now differential equations is certainly one of my favorites and they appear in many many areas of biology, of life sciences, of medicine, everywhere. So it is good if we know a little bit about differential equations. Now a differential equation is just an equation which contains derivatives of a function. Let's maybe start with a function y of t. So there's one function depending on one variable and in this case we call y the dependent variable and then t would be the independent variable. I would like to show you the two types of equations we study. So, on the one hand we have y prime equals a function which depends on t, which means it depends only on the independent variable. And then of course on the other hand we have an equation which depends on the dependent variable. So y prime equals f of y. So these are two types of differential equations. And in this video I only focus on the first type, which we call a pure time differential equation. And then the other case, y prime equals f of y, is called an autonomous differential equation. And we will see that autonomous differential equations really require some very different methods compared to pure time differential equations. And we study those in following videos. So here in this video we really only focus on this class of models. If we talk about solving a differential equation, then of course we want to find a function y of t which satisfies the differential equation. So in this context a solution is no longer just a number. Here a solution is indeed a whole function y of t. Now solving pure time differential equations is basically the same as finding antiderivatives, as I explain on the next slide. It's just finding antiderivatives. Let me tell you why this is the case. So here's a problem. Find the solution y of t to the differential equation d by dt y equals t squared plus 3 sine t. So let me introduce right away a function f of t, which is the right-hand side. So t squared plus 3 sine t. The problem tells us we need to find a function y which derivative is f of t. Well, of course we know functions who do that, which are the antiderivatives. In fact, each antiderivative has a derivative equal to f. That's the definition of antiderivative. So let's write this down. f prime of t equals t squared plus 3 sine t. So why not just say y equals f, capital F. So just choose y of t equals f of t and we have a solution to the differential equation. So solution means a function which does satisfy the equation. So that's interesting here in this case a solution is not just a number like 2 or 15 or root of 7. Here a solution is really a function, a whole function satisfying the differential equation. So but now what is f actually? Let's be more specific. What is f? Finding the antiderivative of the expression is easy. That's 1 third t to the 3 minus 3 cosine t. Right, if I differentiate cosine, I get minus sine, so that's one minus sine appearing here. Um, but what did I forget? What did I forget? Exactly. The large constant c, right? The antiderivatives always have a free constant floating around. So what is this now? So the solution of a differential equation seems to depend on a constant c, which is kind of unknown at the moment. And in fact, you can choose whatever you want, you always have a solution. So take this big F, differentiate it, you always get t squared plus 3 sine t. So y of t is f of t is called a general solution, since it depends on a constant. So how can we find the constant? Well, from the information given, we cannot. The constant is just the constant. So to find the constant c, we need more information. And this more information comes typically from an initial value. So that's on the next slide here. So now we call it an initial value problem, which consists of the differential equation plus 
an initial condition. So here we set y at time 0 should be equal to 1. So this is the differential equation and this is the initial condition. Finding a solution means I should find a function y that satisfies the differential equation but also at the same time the initial condition. So let's see if we can do that. Well, we did solve the differential equation, didn't we? So we know already that y of t is one-third t to the 3 minus 3 cosine t plus a constant. But now in addition we want to satisfy y at 0 is equal to 1 is equal to 1, but then from this formula y at 0 is also equal to 0 and then cos at 0 is equal to 1, so it's minus 3 plus c. So this is supposed to be equal to 1, so that makes c equal to be 4. Right? So we found our constant. So we plug it back in and then we get y of t equals 1 third t to the 3 minus 3 cosine t plus 4. And this is the solution to the initial value problem. And you see, right compared to before, here we have a constant, here we have a specific value 4, and the specific value was chosen because of an additional initial condition. Here's another example. Now I call it y of x. So now the dependent variable is y, the independent variable is now called x. So what do we have to do? Solve the differential equation and the initial value problem for this. So we first solve the differential equation, and then this is of pure time form, pure time, meaning there is no uh, y there on the right-hand side. So we can use the antiderivative. The antiderivative is if I integrate 1, I get x. If I integrate the exponential, I get e to the x, and then my lovely constant. Done! I have already a solution to the differential equation. So this is really not difficult. And then the initial condition, y at 0 is 0. So using the formula, we have y at 0 is minus 2 e to the 0 plus c. e to the 0 is equal to 1. So this is minus 2 plus c. And it is supposed to be 0. So then we get the constant to be, no, not 0. We get the constant to be equal to 2. So then the solution to the initial value problem is given as y of x equals x minus 2 e to the x plus 2. Okay. Let's just look very quickly at autonomous differential equations. So now this does not depend on t, but it depends on y. And the methods become very, very different. However, we have seen these equations before, right? If you remember, we had equations for natural growth and natural decay. There we had the equation n prime equals kn, for example, right? So if n is the dependent variable and t is the independent variable, then this here has to be seen as a function of n, right? So we have an equation n prime equals a function of n. So this is of the autonomous form, and we cannot just use the antiderivative. But in this case, we know the solution anyways, which is n of t equals n0 e to the kt. We did this as we studied natural growth or decay. So we know the solution already. And here is still an unknown constant right in there. Which means, again, we can study an initial value problem. So let's say initially n0 would be maybe the number of bacteria we have. So let's say it is 10,000 initially. So then we get n of t is equal to 10,000 e to the kt. And the constant here has been specified. So even though autonomous differential equations cannot be solved with the antiderivative, they still have the property that the general solution has a free constant, like here, and the initial value problem has a solution where the constant has been found. Let me summarize this. So we distinguish between the dependent variable, which is usually y or n in the last example, and the independent variable, which is often t or x. And a differential equation alone has a general solution, which still depends on an unknown constant, 
whereas the initial value problem has a unique solution, where the constant has been found. You have to see this. You have to get this. Hey, Dr. Hillen, do you have some money? This is a super offer. It's on sale now. He is selling antiderivatives of e to the x. It's on sale.